Hey everyone, I want to thank everybody for viewing these tutorials. Seems like I'm getting a lot of uh, attention lately. I've been seeing 15, 20 subscriptions every day. It's pretty cool. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the comments. Uh, some of those are pretty funny. Uh, I'll try not to distract anybody with my voice any, uh, from here on out. Um, today though, uh, from some of those comments, it's become pretty clear that uh, people are wanting to move forward from where we left off. And that's what we're going to start now. This uh, first video, I'm going to kind of recap what we've done and talk about where we're going to go from here and why. So where we left off was we had taken a, a design from uh, another website and I took a screenshot of it, we loaded it into Photoshop, and from that point on we uh, kind of remade that whole design from the ground up. And uh, once we did that, we cut up the graphics that we needed and went into Dreamweaver, and we wrote the HTML and CSS in order to make this uh, layout. And here's the final result from where we left off on video 18. So at this point, we have a web page. Um, technically, I guess you could consider this a website, um, but it really doesn't do anything other than show this page. None of the links work, they don't go anywhere. So what we need to decide now is, is how we're gonna go on from this point on. So what we need to talk about is our navigation, and we'll start with this uh, main navigation here at the top. We, we have our, our anchor tags or link tags already put in here. However, they're not going anywhere. Uh, the href property is, is not set to a URL or a page yet. The quick and dirty way to do this would be to just put in uh, our page names here so so we'd make a services page and a hosting page and so on and by doing this we're we're going about it uh, in a static way or uh, doing static design development and in order to do things this way that means we, we do have to have an actual service page, a hosting page, a contact page, the information pages about the different hosting plans, and so on. And at this point, using only HTML and CSS, really the only way we can go about this is duplicate these pages and change the content in order to suit the, the specific pages. So let's talk about this. We have two types of websites for the most part. There's static and dynamic. The static websites are kind of what we just talked about where things are kind of hard coded or manually put into each page, which means we actually actually have to have a page for each, um, say topic on the website, be it hosting services, etc. We, basically need to copy this index page and paste it or save it as another page called services for instance and then strip out the pieces and parts that we don't want and then put in the services information or the hosting information and so you could see we could end up with several pages um, now there's pros and cons to to static websites uh, same with dynamic websites one of the pros to the static websites is if you are making a really simple website with a simple layout, it could be one of the quickest ways to do it. Um, you, can, you can just kind of do exactly what we just did, copy the pages, swap out some content, and you're good to go. Uh, another pro is that you don't necessarily need to learn any new languages, any server-side technology or anything like that. You can get away with doing these with the knowledge you have at the moment. Now the, the major con here is that 
when you have all these ex all these pages and you're copying and pasting the layout, the navigation, and all that into each one, what happens when you need to make a change to something that's consistent, like the layout um, or the the navigation? Say you wanted to take services out of the menu at the top, the main nav. Well, you'd have to go through each page, hosting html services.html and so on and remove that link um, now that doesn't seem like too big of a deal but what if you have to make several changes in a day or what if you have a client who um, is very meticulous and can't make up their mind and they're having you change things you know, four or five times a day uh, this could get pretty daunting and, and it leaves a lot of room for errors um, you don't to fix just one typo you might have to find five of them um, or you may forget to take something out of one of the pages so while I'm not saying you shouldn't do static websites they're perfectly fine and if you're still uh, a beginner to all this maybe this is the way to go for a while um, but the more efficient and professional way to do a website is by using dynamic technology here where instead of having 10 15 different pages we have one or maybe a couple more pages that hold the the layout or what we might call the template of the site and we dynamically load or inject is another term used we, we load or inject this content from either a database or elsewhere externally um, and what this allows you to do is, is kind of have this template, the static template that if you need to make a change, say to the, the navigation, you need to, you want to take out the services link like, uh, like we mentioned previously, you have to do it once rather than 15, 16 times, depending how many pages you have. So this can be um, benefit enough to go this route. Um, there's different levels of complexity with Dynamics websites. Um, they could be pretty simple, where you're just uh, including some simple data that's on the server um, and other pages, which I'll explain later. Or you could be setting up uh, a very detailed database to handle what data comes in and out of the website in various areas. So here's a real simple model of a static website. You have the the server here and your kind of root folder. Say you have a hosting account. This is your public underscore HTML or htdocs or whatever. This is where your uh, site starts. Um, and in here you have your pages. Uh, I've simplified this. I, I didn't want to put all the pages we might have to have in here, but you can see we have index, services, contact, about us, um, and so on. These are just examples and each one of these would have to have the full layout included in them. But with a dynamic website you have your server and your database is saved on the server and your root folder and you say have your index page which you'll notice is uh, I've got it as index.php. So this is now going to become a PHP page. Um, and what PHP allows us to do is to communicate with the database. So we've got our one page, it's got our layout, our navigation, and all that, and we can tell it to load content from the database depending on what we need to load. So we don't need to have a, a home page, a about us page, a services page, etc. We just have one, um, and it's got the template in it, and we call on the database to load specific items and those items can be pulled in, in numerous different ways and and we'll talk about that here in future lessons but i just wanted to go over this really quick because because i wanted to kind of explain what direction we're going to go in this series from here on out um, i had to make the decision to go one or the other ways and showing you how to make a static website I've pretty much already done um, all you really have to do is copy and paste uh, 
all the code into a new page each time you want to make a new page or save as and change the name of the document and you're good to go and then you just need to link those documents by putting the file name in there uh, in the href property of each link um, unless people give me an overwhelming demand for going over static de uh, development in, in more detail then we're going to move on and we're going to start working on dynamic websites from here on out and don't get scared if you're still a beginner because we're going to start with the more basic um, and easier to understand implementations of dynamic development first um, so before you bail out uh, listen to the next few videos and and kind of see how far you can get with it thanks